Hey everybody. Well, it's Monday morning, and since I'm not at work today, and we've got uh, some temporary nice weather, we do have a lot of cloud cover with uh, heavy threat of rain. But at the moment, there's no rainfall, and uh, it's actually really warm for being January. So I'm going to make a little update. So if you've been watching uh, the videos on this uh, project, Ford Escort ZX2, you know where we're at. Um, bought the car cheap. It already had the head gasket blown once and supposedly replaced. And now it's uh, down and out again. Well, I've got the car running since. And um, <clears throat> I suspect that we've got a blown head gasket again. So we're going to do a little diagnostic to try to determine if this is the case. So ordinarily, if uh, I've already done the compression test on it, and we've already looked at that once, and of course there's our compression readings, I suspect that this cylinder is where we're losing our compression since it's got between 100 and 110 PSI, whereas the rest are 120, 130, somewhere in there. So we've already done a compression test. Ordinarily, after doing a compression test and determining that we're most likely losing compression in the engine somewhere, the next step in the process would be to use this cylinder leakage tester by U.S. General Manufacturers. This is one of the best, most versatile tools I've purchased, and I've already used it on the 99 Escort, which I have on the other side of the property. And basically, you would connect one end of the hose to the cylinder that you're going to test, and then you hook up this regulator gauge assembly and hook it to a compressed air source, and it would help you to determine where the compression is being lost. But because of the fact that we're looking at uh, potentially inclement weather today, I don't want to be involved in taking the cover off of the valve cover and or the uh, top part off of the valve cover to get to the spark plug wires and be in the middle of it when the weather decides to open up. So I'm going to show you how to do the redneck version to determine whether or not compression gases are being lost from the uh, cylinders into the radiator. And the tool we're going to use to do this, well, let me show you. Well, there's the tool we're going to use. A very simple condom. Contraceptive. I know, you're wondering, how are you going to use a condom as a automotive diagnostics tool? Well, let's show you what we're going to do. We're going to put the contraceptive, unraveled of course, over the mouth of the radiator. <clears throat> and we're going to take the overflow hose and crimp it to prevent loss of combustion gases if they're getting into the system. Then we're going to start the car. If we're getting combustion gases into the coolant system, it should inflate the condom like a balloon. If we're not getting loss of combustion gases into the coolant system, then really nothing should happen. Okay, so we've got this all set up now. Our condom is unraveled and is permanently affixed, or firmly affixed, I should say, over the mouth of the radiator. And the overflow tube, I have taken over here and folded it and pinned it beneath that air conditioner line. So we're not going to experience any um, compression gases there. Now, I do have a slight radiator leak at the lower radiator hose, but it's only slight and only when the car warms up. So this shouldn't affect the test whatsoever. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the camera aside and uh, we're going to try to start this in. Well, I'll just take the camera with me. I don't want it to fall and break. So we're going to try to start the engine. And if we're getting combustion gases into the radiator, then this thing should inflate, at least partially. If there's no combustion gases getting into the coolant system, then really nothing should happen. <clears throat> So let's see what's going to happen here. Well, it's inflating. And that's without a perfect seal. I'll wrap my hand around here a little bit. Well, anyway, we've got a seal. We'll try to see if we can get this to inflate a little better here. Well, it's 
it's inflating slowly, but now that I got a better seal, it's actually filling the condom up like a balloon. This engine will probably die here in a second. And here we go. Now, we're going to smell of the gases that are in here and see. And I can tell you from the odor right there, that's exhaust gas. So there you have it. We're definitely getting exhaust gas into the radiator. Purchase of a condom. I think I paid, what, 75 cents or 50 cents at a vending machine at a nearby service station versus cylinder leakage tester by US General. And I think I paid close to 40, $44 or $45 at a tool store in a nearby town so that one requires that you remove spark plugs and have compressed air and all that good stuff this just requires that you remove the radiator cap and firmly affix the condom over the radiator neck and um, start the car if the engine is to the point where it will start so I've determined pretty positively that we've got a either a blown head gasket or a warped head, cracked head, something in that area is um, damaged or defective. Um, also, come over here. Okay, I don't know if the camera's picking this up, but there's that slight little spotting that looks kind of like caramel. That's a pretty classic sign that you're getting uh, water in the oil and that wasn't that way when I bought the car because I wiped all that down so I think we've done a pretty definitive redneck test that we've got uh, at least one cylinder probably the one with the 100 110 psi um, that's getting exhaust gases into the coolant system so that's where we're at uh, the temperature gauge still don't work and despite the fact that that sensor looks brand new and the thermostat housing looks like it's been removed but that's where we're at so the like in all likelihood with my current employment situation um, on suspension from my recent job and may not be working after tomorrow I'm not sure um, the likelihood of me paying the hundred and $68 for the head gasket set plus uh, coming up with the necessary uh, timing alignment tools for the dual cams and the retaining pin for the crankshaft in order to put this car on the road probably not going to happen so in all likelihood the uh, the end result here is this car is officially up for sale um, I'm going to give it a little thought today right now scrap prices in my area are two hundred and thirty five or two hundred and forty dollars a ton for scrap cars even after I pull off these wheels and tires pull the radiator out pull the catalytic converter off drain the fuel out of the tank and uh, maybe throw a little scrap metal in it um, I'll get my money back and then some because I haven't invested anything into this yet so that's where we're at um, unless I find somebody that's willing to buy this as a a project car, a fixer-upper, you know. Um, I'm not going to invest any money into it. So, anyway, that's where we're that's where we're at right now. Thanks for watching. Comments welcome, and of course, if you're interested in purchasing uh, the vehicle, um, feel free to post. I am in Oklahoma, um, just off the Arkansas line. So feel free to make a comment with that regards but I'm gonna have to sell this car pretty quick uh, because of my current financial situation and I still have other projects that need to be taken care of that still needs stem seals and uh, valve cover gaskets and some linkages and this and that and the other and so it's a never-ending thing but anyway that's your little redneck uh, diagnostic right there thanks for watching oh and uh, one last little note. Here in poor redneck world, condoms are not just for sex anymore. Thanks for watching.